Hello, hello, hello. So I need my screen here. Um, perhaps you heard some other talks from me at this conference, and then you may know that I'm not this kind of PHP hardcore programming guy. I can write eel helpers, but that's, that's my edge case. So, Kücher, that's, um, I want to show this website I made some months ago. I'm working at Gesagetan in Salzburg. Beautiful mountains, we have a beautiful view. And one of the great package I use, I want to mention, is this Neos Metadata Extractor package. With this package, we are able to extract the metadata from the image and put it out on the front end. And it was really great, and it was a fun to work with. And I want to show this, uh, the front end. It's really nice if the customer has nice photos, as you see. He has three stores in Austria. Have a lot of workshops he made with photographers in different locations. And the user can just go through all that, can filter it and look after it if there's a workshop. They have some crazy tests with some explosions and motorcycles and all this kind of stuff. Really, really nice stuff on the website. Um, yeah, also for the, you can filter there for different brands. And you have also a kind of secondhand store where you can sort, you can search for them. You can say, I want to have a new one, or it can be used, all this kind of stuff. And all this kind of stuff is just done without any line of PHP. So yes, one e-helper, I think, or two, but that's it. And now I want to show you some of the front end. Front end. On first side, we integrate some kind of page slider where you can just click on the top and then you have a nice view with all this kind of text where you can add and you can edit uh, the stuff there. And here we have the uh, test case. And as you see, that's just organized with Node. So it's not a really... Uh, an edge case, study case here, what you see, but I, I want to inspire you that you can do so many cool things with, with just no types. It's, it's really cool. Many times you just don't need a, a hardcore package where it makes some magic. You can have the magic right in your hands with the no types. So, and you have some really nice galleries, and on the right you see you can just, they just can say, I want to have this tag or this kind of pictures, and all those pictures get collected from the tag name who was tagged in, the, in Photoshop or in Lightroom, and then all these tags from this photographer get collected and outputted on the website. And then you have also events, and some special thing is the, the customer in the back end edit the event on the, on the event itself, but the customer in the front end goes on the node who's a date. Because one event can have multiple dates, and if the state is over, he gets always to look at the newest one. And this kind, on this kind, we have a really, he's really nice way to organize his events. He don't have to put it all the time the same again and again. He just can put all the dates in it, and he's done. And that's a, a really nice way. And in the front end, uh, the, the redirection can always get nice and clean handled with that. He can also add all this kind of photograph people in, in the back end. He has here a nice back end view. And with a checkbox, he just can switch between these two views. In this ca case, the, the people can look at the front end at the photographers and open the details in a dialog. In the other case, it's just for back end use. So they can decide if they want to show the photograph or all these kind of people that you can have other staff members or something like that, just get handled like that. It's really, really nice. And that's, I just done it with a 
renaming of a property, just renamed the label and moved it a little bit. So it's, it's basically just hidden in index. And like that, I just switched uh, the view. And also the handling, even if it's hidden kind of, the front end user is not able to go to this website. He just gets routed to the parent site. In this case, it's the home page. This is the photograph where he can edit the, the details. And it's, it's a good thing to have like of a backend view for the user that he know, oh, now I'm in, in a, on a page who is not able, the user in the front end is not able to go to this website. He just can edit inside of that. So he get a direct feedback where he is, if he's on a really front page who the people can visit or just a, a edit page for, for all these assets. I'm kind of too fast, huh? But it's okay. We have this second-hand store also built inside. And it's all this also done with just with nodes. He can add some brands. And in this brand, he can add uh, products. And he just can say, if, for example, you see on the right, if there's a, a connector is missing, he just can edit a new one just with one click. He don't have to go to the, to the connectors. He just can edit right out, the, right out of this particular product. It's a really nice feature. The same is done with, with the categories. He just can go there, just can add a new, new uh, category, as is seen here. Of course, uh, one product can have multiple connectors, but just one category. So. It's just a reference, and if it's empty, you can add this new one. Yeah, that's it. You see, you can do so many great stuff just with some nice node type definition. It needs perhaps some of kind of a brain work. You have some times you rewrite some root matter where you say, okay, if this kind, if the user came on this mix-in where it's just a backend view, go to the parent page, for example, or redirect it to another page. But with this kind of stuff, you can really create awesome sites where the, your client can give you the feedback, oh, that's, this is awesome. Really, really get some kind of emails from this client, as he said to us, it is awesome to, to handle all this stuff. Okay, you have to know before he had a shopware and have to handle all his page on shopware. And of course, <laughs> this is a really a big charm for him to go from shopware pages to Neos pages. But nevertheless, it's, it's so easy to create this kind of feeling for the, for the redactor to have a good editor experience. And I want to encourage you to, to keep an eye on that also, not on only what the user in the front end may see, so then also on the, what the editor in the back end experience that he gets helps if something is missing, that you inform it that he has to create a node, for example. So, I don't know if you uh, saw it, perhaps it was in the video, I think, and it was a little bit fast, but all this metadata from the photos that we, that we extract, if the User in the front end clicks on the web on, on the photo, it gets open in a light box. And on the bottom, we have all this kind of nice, I draw some nice icons where you can see um, all this data from this photo, how long was the, the closure, the aperture, all this kind of stuff. I don't know how to say it. Um, but it's really nice because they get the feedback from their customer that this is awesome because they can look at these great photographs and look how they done and which was the setting from the camera and which camera he was using and which objective he was using, all this kind of stuff. So um, for me, it was, it was awesome to use this package because I, I saw this package and said, oh, this would be cool if we could use it one time. And here we had the perfect case for that. So that's what it's. Thank you very much. That means it's with Swiss German means thank you. Um, if you have questions about the, about the project, you can come after me words and I can show you something or explain you something. 
Yes, thank you very much. Wow. <laughs> ah, good. Uh, we just had uh, minor technical difficulties with Microsoft, but now I think it, I hope it works. <laughs> okay. So, um, we're very happy to be here today um, to present you our project. Cornelsen.de. So, um, Cornelsen, you might have heard of it. No, sorry. Okay, the clicker works now. Okay. So Cornelsen, you might have already heard of it. So if you're uh, if you went to school in Germany or your kids went to school here, um, you will have heard of our products because we're an education company and we are mainly doing textbooks like the ones you can see here. And like a lot of publishing companies, we want to succeed in the area of digital transformation. And today we want to talk about a little project that is part of that process. So, what is our challenge? The challenge was to relaunch the Cornelian DE catalog. Um, it is the main function to date for our website, just listing the products and showing some marketing sites for it. So, okay, I, the clicker doesn't really work, so I will work from here. I hope it doesn't distract you. Um, so, our assignment was basically three main topics. It was, the first one was to replace 80 and more um, existing product sites and marketing sites with just one site. Um, the second point was to ensure compliance on all those sites, especially for use media on it. And the third one was to introduce a new web CMS. And our, at the time, our stakeholders were very sure about that point. We don't need any responsive layout. So that was that. So what was given? We started with a small team uh, of three PHP developers um, with uh, experience also in JavaScript and HTML, and they had a um, passion for open source software. Um, also, we had an old online catalog software that was based on a closed source enterprise CMS, and it was unsupported at the time. And it was really hard to develop with. So, um, what were we looking for? We looked for a um, PHP based solution that was a fit for our team. Um, we wanted to have structured editing and a good user experience for online editors, because there was this thing about the old system, there were uh, a lot of complaints about the way you edited content and managed content, so we were looking for a better way to do that. And another thing uh, we wanted to look into, we wanted a system that we can evolve with. So we looked for a system that had uh, an open source code base, a good foundation for development, so a good framework underneath, and an active and ambitious community. So here's our shortlist. Um, we looked into Zulu, Drupal, Typo3, um, Easy Platform, and Neos. And now I want to tell you why actually Neos. So um, for us, Neos had an outstanding editor interface, and it was built for development at the time. Um, it was ready for production, which funnily not all the competitors were in our, uh, in our eye. It had a um, vivid community, and um, 
the thing about the community that was special in our <coughs> in our eyes was that um, new paradigms were adopted very fast and in our eyes very solid. And you seem to make uh, you seem to make the right choices for two sets. Um, another good thing about Neos we thought was that you had great abstractions like the content dimensions or um, you were already talking about um, event sourcing at the time. So I hope I could give you a bit of an overview and now Jürgen will tell you about how we created the catalog. So, hello. Um, I will tell you what we've done in all the duration of, of the project. Firstly, we had to uh, implement importers. Uh, it was a lot of migration data. Firstly, it was a lot of product data and other stuff. But uh, I don't talk much about this because it was in, in sub-projects. And we had to ensure uh, this compliance. Uh, therefore, we had to integrate uh, a digital asset management system. In our case, this was called Elvis, which is an enterprise system. And uh, there we had uh, the, our first uh, enablement. Uh, um, uh, we enabled uh, uh, development for the Neos core. So uh, we uh, Built the asset sources. Maybe you've heard about this. Uh, Robert talked on this keynote and the last keynote already. Um, and uh, we uh, strictly separated presentational components from integration uh, to uh, build a good foundation we can well, build up onto. And, uh, uh, had a lot of uh, or put a lot of effort uh, uh, to enhance the already great uh, editor experience. Uh, I'd like to show you a short demo demo film uh, of uh, form builder. Uh, that's the way we build up forms. Uh, I think it's a good example of our semantic approach for our backend interface. We we. we we are onto. Um, we are, have semantic building blocks. The editor, editor is guided with, and uh, he also can do fine-grained uh, modifications on it. Uh, um, and he cannot uh, destroy the design or do any validation issues. Uh, I start this now, and. Uh, here you can see on the the left uh, you have a form with sections and therein you can also you can make a new section and you can put building blocks in it uh, we have quite a lot uh, you can uh, choose between schools contacts and other pre-created uh, building blocks um, and you can um, modify this building blocks uh, as I told you already, uh, by uh, removing uh, some fields or adding some fields or maybe uh, change the required flag, but you cannot break uh, validation on the base or do any harm to the design. So here's our result. Uh, as you can see, uh, we, that's just a part of it. We have a lot of different uh, content pages. And um, let me give you some statistics that you give an idea how big the site is. We have uh, more than 100,000 nodes, and we have uh, 250 node types, which uh, uh, shows, I think, uh, that you see we care about this uh, thematic thing uh, and uh, separate our uh, concerns. Uh, uh, we all uh, we built more than 15 custom packages and uh, did multiple extensions of the Neos core. Um, and for a long-running project uh, like this, it's more than two years now, um, uh, the challenge changes and uh, our stakeholders uh, 
uh, have different requirements and uh, they told us, sorry, uh, actually this thing you already heard, you, you cannot do uh, a website without responsive in 2018 or 19. Uh, uh, that was obvious. Uh, some sites to have uh, to have their own domain, and uh, we already need uh, we need a magazine. We need to organize competitions, and not to forget, uh, all of this has to have uh, the same layout and design, and have uh, one flow, like it works. So, how did we do this? Uh, okay, uh, adding responsive layout to. Uh, it was, I think, uh, 70,000 sites uh, or, or pages, uh, and uh, we have more than 5,000 curated sites. Uh, um, to fix the layout was not the big thing. Uh, thing. It was uh, a minor issue because we anticipated uh, that this will come, uh, so we only had to uh, do some refactorings, but uh, a major issue is still uh, what do we do with the uh, manually selected images? And uh, you have heard Robert's talk. Uh, you can uh, make a guess. Uh, smart cropping is uh, another thing we enabled uh, to build for the Neos Core. Um, and yeah, this uh, helps us, as Robert already told you, by calculating the focus of the images and make adjustments so that this uh, cropping for images uh, is done the right way and doesn't destroy uh, the, the meaning of images or, or the images uh, have sometimes not really uh, content that shows things you will see. Uh, and also you can have a workflow and uh, make reviews and further adjustments with this. So uh, the responsive uh, will be ready or, or you can see it in maybe a month, I think. Uh, so we had also to build multi-site setup. So here we also started simple and made a monolithic approach just to uh, get done and, and, and make make steps in the right direction and also implemented support for custom styling on, on, on side level. Um, creating a competition package was uh, a lot of work. We, we, we also uh, made or, or, or wanted a good user experience, but it was just one more package. And um, a big thing for us is uh, a thing we call design kit. What is it? It's, uh, it's a design system. We already separated our presentationals, but here we uh, um, hand over the responsibility of these uh, presentationals to our UX department and the designers and uh, have uh, an AFX fusion package uh, that uh, will be shared and um, is an implementation of this definition. So, I just want to give you an uh, outlook what will happen next, where we stand. Uh, we have our new requirements uh, for scaling uh, this setup. We want the tool set that we can easily create new websites uh, so we can uh, enable uh, multiple teams to effecti effectively set up new websites with uh, all these compliance and CEO tracking things already set up. Um, and uh, we want also to make it happen that we can share this consistent look and feel, not only in, in, in News Infusion, but in our whole web stack. Uh, so, uh, we want to transfer the design kit into web components uh, so we can also use uh, these definitions in Java implementations, JavaScript, whatever. It, it doesn't matter which web framework, just has, this has to be uh, a web uh, implementation. And uh, we want to build up uh, 
and we want to break our monolith into parts to have building blocks, uh, to have a solid foundation that we can easily uh, set up uh, multiple NEOS instances and uh, the teams that support these uh, instances are not, uh, have less complex ability and only have their feature they implement in this uh, smaller part. Um, yeah, so I want to uh, ask Stefan to make a recap. Okay, so um, we're at the end of our presentation and I want to do a quick summary. Um, NEOS all in all is for us a win-win situation, so for Cornelsen and I think also the community with the features that we enable to develop. Um, our learning is start simple but solid and then evolve and refactor. So in the end you can scale with your team. Um, another thing is that um, learning by doing is a concept that you should um, expand on in your company. Um, you will grow as company and team with that. So uh, another thing is that we um, work together with great developers and agencies within the community. So um, we enabled um, features like asset sources, smart cropping, and so on. And so we wanted to say a big thank you to um, uh, Flow Native Network team and all the developers that worked for us. Um, yes, thank you. <laughs>